Hello, I'm going to do a little video here on uh, binary and hexadecimal uh, numbers and math. Um, this will be part of my 6502 assembly language uh, series because you have to understand binary, at least the basics of it, to do some assembly language stuff. Um, now, binary is the system that computers use down at the low level um, where um, everything is bits. So, if you have an 8-bit byte, that means you, know, you have something like this where it has 8 values, and each value is 0 or 1. So in binary, there are only two possible digits, 0 or 1. Um, our normal system, we call decimal, you have 0 through 9, you have 10 possible digits. So binary, there's just 2. Then hexadecimal, there's 16. So you can have 0 through 9 and also A through F. The A through F represent the 10 through 15. Now, <clears throat> hexadecimal is not really a separate system. Um, it's just another way to show... It, it, it sits on top of binary pretty well. That's why we use it. Because you can translate back and forth between binary and hexadecimal real easily because 16 is a multiple of 2, whereas or is a power of two, whereas decimal isn't. So translating from binary to decimal is, is a lot more difficult. Um, so hexadecimal is really just another way to, to show numbers um, that's easier than binary, because if you take a binary number, you know, like one one zero one one zero zero one one, you don't have to look at numbers like that all day and try to figure out what they are. So if you take something like this, this would be um, B, 3, B3, believe it or not, is actually easier to work with than something like this. So, I'll explain how hexadecimal translates here in a bit, but um, to explain binary, <coughs> first, let's talk about decimal. With a normal number, like say 163, if you ask yourself, what does this actually mean? Well, if you go back to grade school, you know, arithmetic, you say, okay, well, the 3 is in the 1's column, the 6 is in the 10's column, and the 1 is in the 100's column. So this means 3 1's, 6 10's, and 1 100. And if you keep, you know, if you had a bigger number, you'd go to 1,000, 10,000, and so on. Well, the reason this these are what they are is because they're actually powers of 10. 1 is 10 to the 0th power, 10 is 10 to the 1st, 10 to the 2nd, 10 to the 3rd, 10 to the 4th, and so on. So the base of all these is 10, and then the exponent starts at 0 and keep, and goes up. And that's why we call it a base 10 system. So we, we say this is 163 base 10. So in binary, you get the same thing. You get, except it's a base 2 system. You only have two possible digits instead of 10 digits. So you have a base 2 system. You start with 2 to the 0th, 2 to the 1st, 2 to the 2nd, 2 to the 3rd, 2 to the 4th, 2 to the 5th, 2 to the 6th, and 2 to the 7th. Now I'm going to stop at 7 because we generally work with an 8-bit byte. So this gives you 8, eight bits. So 2 to the 0th is 1, 2 to the 1st is 2, 2 to the 2nd is 4, 2 to the 3rd is 8, and so on. You just keep doubling. So whereas in the decimal system you keep multiplying by 10, in the binary system you, you, know, you multiply by 2, and so each bit is, is worth twice as much as the last one. So if you have an 8-bit number, an 8-bit value, so let's say it's like 00110101, to find out how much this is, you would just add up the, the bits that have 1s, the ones that are turned on. Because Basically, in, in binary, a, a 1 is on or true, and a 0 is, is off or false. You kind of use all those terms interchangeably. So this would be 32 plus 16 is 48, plus 4 is, is uh, 52, plus 1 is 53. So this would be 53 in base 10. Now, I'll get to the hexadecimal thing in a second here, I guess. Um, Okay, so with an 8-bit byte, then, you can represent, if you add all these up, if they were all 1s, if 
throw ones, then you would add all these up and you would get 255. So that means with an 8-bit byte you can show numbers anywhere from 0 to 255. That's your, that's your limit. Okay. Now for hexadecimal, what we do to translate is we just cut this in half and we treat each 4-bit half of it, which is called a nibble, we treat each nibble as its own thing. So if you just look at this, and let's say this was 1010, 0, 1, 0, this nibble is, this is 8, and this is 2, that's 10, and hexadecimal, that's A, and so we would represent that as A. If you say the other nibble is, let's say, 0, 1, 1, 0, Instead of looking at this, this, treat it as if it's the bottom half. So this is 1, 2, 4, and 8. We have 4 plus 2, it's 6. So if you treat each, each one separately as just a 4-bit number, then you can translate to hexadecimal. And the way it translates is 0, 0, 0, 0 is equal to 0. So this would be the binary, this would be hexadecimal. 0, 0, 0, 1 is 1. 0, 0, 1, 0 is 2 because, see if you had 0, 0, 1, 0, that's where you get 2. 3 would be 0, 0, 1, 1. And then 4, you turn on the next one. You turn on the 4 bit, turn off the 2 and 1 bits. And so 0, 1, 0, 0 is 4. And you just continue adding one as you go. And after you have some practice, these just come pretty naturally to you. And eventually you get down to 1111, which is F. So any 8 bit value can be treated as two 4 bit values, and they can be translated with this table if I, if I filled in 9A, nine, nine B, C, D, and E. They could be translated from 4-bit binary values to a one-digit one hexadecimal value. And so you can take this, like so this is 6, this right now is 4, and so in hexadecimal this becomes 6-4. So you're always translating from an 8-bit byte to a two-digit a two two hexadecimal number. And the hexadecimal numbers then can go from in an 8-bit byte can go from 0, 0 up to FF. FF would be 255, would be the largest one. That would be all 1s in here, all those things added up. So that's, so hexadecimal is really just this applied to binary, applied to the binary. And so, you know, once you have some practice, you just know these and it's not a big deal. Um, <clears throat> And that way you can use hexadecimal in your programming. You don't have to actually type in binary numbers, which would be a heck of a pain. All right. So now let's talk about actually doing math in binary. When you do math in decimal, let's say you're adding 16 plus 17, you add the 6 and the 7, you get 13. But you can't just write 13, can you? because that's too big. It's only a, it's a base 10 system. We can't go past 9. So when these add up to 13, you have to just leave the last digit, the 3 here, and you carry the 1. Okay, and then you add that in over there. Well, the same thing happens in binary. If, if you add 1 plus 1 in binary, you get 2. But there is no 2 in binary. There's only 0 and 1. Well, let me put my... Oops. Let me put my chart back up here. That's 1. 0, 0, 1, 0 is 2. 0, 0, 1, 1 is 3. Okay. So 1 plus 1 equals 2. We don't have a 2. We've got to use... 1, 0, and so that equals 1, 0. All right. So you would carry the 1 if you had other stuff. If it wasn't just 1 plus 1, let's say it's 1, 1 plus 1, 1. You'd say, okay, 1 plus 1 is 1, 0, which is 2. So the 0 goes here, the 1 gets carried up here. 
Now I've got 1 plus 1 plus 1, that's 3. So to show 3 in binary, it's 1, 1. So now I've got a 1 and another 1. So this is 3, 1, 1 is 3, this is 3. And to this, if you look here, this is 6. 0 in the 1 spot, 2 and a 4. This is this is two and this is four, so that equals six. So we, you know, you should always get the same thing. It shouldn't matter what your, it shouldn't matter whether you're adding in decimal or binary or hexadecimal or what. You should get the right answer if you do it right. Um, but this is how the computer does it. The computer does it just with ones and zeros. So we have to be able to carry if you're adding two numbers. If you're adding two two numbers in binary, just like you do in, in decimal. So let's say you're, let's say this is one number that you've got, and you're going to add to it this number. Okay. Let's get this out of the center here. All right. Now first of all, I said this was 64, and 64 in hexadecimal. This would be 9, um, 13 would be D. These would be a hexadecimal representation of these numbers. Let's leave that aside for now. So if you start adding here, and you start on the right, just like you do with regular decimal math. So 0 plus 1 is 1, right? That's simple enough. 0 plus 0 is 0. Now we get to 1 plus 1. And 1 plus 1 is 2. So we, so we put down a 0 for our last digit, and then we have to carry the 1. So you carry the 1 up here. Now we've got 1 plus 0 plus 1, that's going to be 2 again. So we put down the 0, carry the 1. 1 plus 0 plus 1, that's 2. Put down the 0, carry the 1. This is 2 again, put down the 0, carry the 1. This is 2, put down the 0, carry the 1. And put down the 0, carry the 1. Now we've got a problem because we only have an 8 bit, we only have 8 bits of space to work with. Now we've got a ninth bit. What happens in the 6502, and I'm not going to get too much into the programming part side of it in this video, but what happens is this ends up in the carry the carry flag, the carry bit of the status register. So that if any, so if your addition, if you do an addition problem and it overflows, you know, if it carries past the last spot, that goes into the carry flag. So that's what that's how you do, and you know, it actually ends up being one. But this represents 256, so they ended up adding up 257. Um, and you'll never, you'll never have more than a single one carry over as long as you're adding two numbers together. Um, and so that's that's how you add binary numbers. You just you're always working with ones and zeros, and the most you can ever get is a three if you have two ones plus a carried one. And so you're always just, you know, again, you're always just putting down a 1 and a 0 and possibly carrying a 1 if there's one to carry. All right, so if you want to do the addition in hexadecimal, you know that you just have to know that D is, um, D is 13. So 13 plus 4 is 17. And since your system only goes up to 16, you have to carry the 16, which would be a 1 in hexadecimal. So you've got 1 and then the carried 16, and then you'd add these together and you'd get, um, uh, yeah, so it's going to be a zero and then carrying another one. So again, it's going to carry out of the number, but all right. So that's how the addition works. Subtraction is basically the same way, um, although the, the CPU doesn't actually do it this way, but um, you, can, you can imagine it this way. That you know, if you're going to subtract zero zero, let's say zero one 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 zero one, let's say we're going to subtract that. It's just like normal subtraction; you have to borrow. And so, to subtract one from zero, you've got to borrow like that. But when you borrow, you know this doesn't become ten; it becomes two. You're borrowing a two from here instead of a 10, and so it becomes 1 and 0, which is 2, and you subtract and you get a 1. Now, when it borrowed from this 0, it's kind of like, you know, in, in regular subtraction in decimal, you make 9, as well, you're going to, 
you're going to borrow across there, but it's the same idea. Um, and in the 6502, before you subtract, you always set the carry register because if it needs to borrow that, then it can. And that that all again that alerts you if it ruled, if it was uh, if the second number was bigger than the first number, that alerts you that you're dealing with a negative. So that's how you add. Now, other things you can do with bits are anding, oring, and exclusive oring, which are, these are the commands um, in 6502, and, or, and exclusive or. <coughs> Let's say you've got an 8-bit value here. You can and together that plus another value. Let's say zero one 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 zero zero one one. Okay. When you do an and, that's not adding. It's doing a boolean and operation. And what that means is, with an and, if you put together two digits, you only get a one if they were both one. So, 0 and 0 equals 0. 0 and 1 equals 0. 1 and 1 equals 1. Okay? Those, are your, those are your possibilities. So, there's no carrying here. There's no carry over from one to the next. Each, each set of bits is treated alone when you're doing these bitwise operations. And so, 1 and 1 is 1. But 0 and 1 is 0. 0 and 0 is 0. 0 and 0 is 0. 1 and 1 is 1. 1 and 1 is 1. But 0 and 1 is 0. And 1 and 0 is 0. Okay. So what happens when you and, the only bits that are still turned on are the ones that were on in both, both of the original values. And that's, just, that's especially useful for if you just want to see if a bit was set. Um, that's probably the most common use for it. Let's say you've got an 8-bit value up here, and you just want to know, is this bit on? Well, what you can do is you can AND it with 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, Because the zeros are going to guarantee that all these other ones are off. And this 1 here, then, will be a 1 if this was a 1, but it'll be a 0 if this was a 0. And so, by ANDing with with the byte where you know there's only one bit set, you can test whether there was a bit set in the other value. Because if this turns out to be zero, it wasn't set. If it turns out to be not zero, it was set. And one thing that's very fast to do in assembly language is branch it, you know, is do something if the last operation was zero. That's a very, very fast thing to check for because there's a zero flag in the status register that is always being set automatically by the last operation. So if this was a zero, <clears throat> then this would be zero, and the zero flag would be set, and you could immediately do a branch off of that. <clears throat> so that's anding. Now, or is sort of the opposite of and, as you might guess. When you or two values, and again, this is just this is just two bits putting two bits together. There's no there's no carryover from one pair to the next. When you or I'm just going to say or it's, it's or a in in the 6502 assembly, but the the mnemonic or the normal way of writing is just or. When you or two zeros, you get zero. But when you or a zero and a one, you get a one. And when you or two ones, you get a one. So an or is always true as long as at least one of the two things was true. So if we put up two values and we do an OR, then everywhere where there was a 1, there's going to be a 1. So 0 and 1 is 1, 0 and 0 is 0, but 1 and 1 is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 and 1. So an OR turns on every bit as long as at least one of the two bits above it you know, as long, as long as one of the two bits in its pair was a one. There's no, 
you know, there, we're not adding, so there's no carry here. 2, 1, it just becomes a 1, just like 0 and 1 becomes a 1. Now, this is especially useful for setting flags. Um, say you've got a value. You know, we, we use the AND to check flags. <clears throat> You can do an OR to set flag. So let's say we've got this we've got this value that's in a memory register somewhere, and we want to set this bit. We want to turn it on. Well, what you can do is you OR that with um, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. When you OR with a value that has a single bit set, you're guaranteeing to turn that bit on, and so you're going to get 1, 0, 1, 1. 0, 0, 0, 1. So you're going to get the same value you had before except with that one bit definitely turned on. If it was already turned on, it's still turned on because an OR doesn't care as long as one of the two is one. If they're both one, that's fine too. Alright, so that's ORing. So generally you use AND to check things or to, or to turn bits off. You can also use an AND to turn bits off because let's say, let's say we have that and we just want to turn this bit off. We can AND it with 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. All these other 1's are going to just leave this the same because if we're ANDing, I should have said this before, but going back to AND for a second, if we're ANDing, the 1's up here are going to stay 1's, the 0's are going to stay 0 because an AND is only 1 if it had both 1's. But this one, which we set, we, we set this to zero, is guaranteed to switch to zero no matter what was up here. And so, let's see, zero and one, yeah, okay. So what that does, when you AND with a byte that has a single bit cleared, that has a single zero bit in it, that turns off that bit in the, in the previous value, regardless of whether it was on or off before. So you use AND and OR to, to turn bits on and off and also to check bits, individual bits in a, in a value. And the last one, exclusive OR, is sort of a combination of AND and OR. With an exclusive OR, two zeros becomes a zero, a zero and a one becomes a one, but two ones becomes a zero. So an exclusive OR is like saying the result is only true if only one of them is true. If they're both, if they're both true, then it's false. If they're both false, it's false. But if one is true and one is false, then it's true. Which probably sounds confusing as heck, but it, <clears throat> it actually makes sense. <clears throat> and one thing you can use this for is, let's say you just want to flip all the bits. If you want to flip all the bits, you just want to turn the ones to zeros and the zeros to ones. You can do an exclusive OR with 255 with with a full set of ones, because then one and one is going to become a zero, but zero and one is going to become one. And so you're going to have this, which is just a mirror image of this. Everything that was a one became a zero, and everything that was a zero became a one. So you can exclusive OR. You can use exclusive OR just to flip certain bits. If you just wanted to flip the first four bits, not all the bits, you'd exclusive OR with <clears throat> 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, because then these will flip, but these will stay the same. See? Because if you exclusive OR a, a bit, whether it's a 0 or 1, if you exclusive OR it with a 0, you're leaving it the same. See? Zero exclusive order zero is zero. Zero exclusive order with one is one. <clears throat> when you exclusive or with a one, you're flipping it. So you can flip certain bits, leave other bits the same by using exclusive or. <clears throat> so that I think that pretty well covers the things you can do with binary math and um, bitwise operations on the 6502. It's you know, it's pretty simple stuff. Like I said, you just have AND, OR, and exclusive OR as far as um, bitwise operations. There is a there is a command called bit, which I'll talk more about when I get into my actual video on the uh, on the instructions. But bit.
it just does an and and then a couple other special things. So as far as the as far as how the math works, it's the same. Um, I would say if you if you know if you want to get into assembly, start to get these numbered mem get these numbers memorized. You know what the values of the bits are. Going from right to left, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, get those memorized. And also start to get memorized that, you know, what the bit patterns, which bit patterns match what values. So 0, 0, 0, 0 is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 is 1, 0, 0, 1, 0 is 2, and then you've got 3, and then you've got 4, and so on. And you just keep adding and carrying, and you'll, you'll work your way up to 1111, which is 15. Um, I used to do a thing with my fingers just to practice, just to say, okay, um, now it's better as the right hand because you're on the right. But, you know, just take those four fingers and just lift up the last one and say, okay, that's one. Now put it back down and lift up the next one. That's two. Both of them are three. Put them both down, lift the next one. That's four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So you can go through, you can count 15 on four fingers um, by using binary binary math. And that'll, you know, if you, if you do that, if you kind of practice that or in your head or on your fingers or whatever, that'll help you learn these. Because once you know these, it's easy to go back and forth between binary and hexadecimal. And it's easy to look at any pattern, you know, that's zero ones, one, 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 zero. It's easy to look at any pattern and say, okay, that is six, and that's E, six E. Or to go the other way, it's easy to look at a six E and know that that's going to be, you know, that's going to have zeros there, there, and there. Because you don't, you don't want to have to try to use binary too much in your programming. You want to be able to use hexadecimal. It's a lot easier to type. So I think that's everything. Um, my next one ought to be on the uh, ought to be on the instructions. So, hope this has been useful. And if you have any questions about it, there should be a place for comments under the video. And uh, thanks for watching.